Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to also thank my colleague uh, from New York, the, the chairwoman of, I mean, the uh, ranking member of the Rules Committee. And I rise today in opposition to the bill uh, and also to the rule. Just a few weeks ago, we observed the fifth anniversary of Superstorm Sandy, and New Jersey's recovery from that traumatic event has been prolonged in part by issues facing the National Flood Insurance Program. Too many of my constituents are still dealing with high premiums, inaccurate flood maps, or are still waiting for their Sandy claims appeals to be decided. And we need a long-term NFIP reauthorization that focuses on increasing affordability, investing in mitigation, capping the profits of the flood insurance companies, and comprehensively restructuring the claims process. And this bill fails these tests. H.R. 3823 would undermine the NFIP by allowing the development of a private flood market, opening the door to allowing insurance companies to cherry pick low risk properties while leaving high risk ones in the NFIP. And this bill also does not do enough to address affordability issues and actually increases rates for some policy holders. It will allow commercial properties to opt out of mandatory coverage even if, even if they're in a high risk zone, which will further decrease the pool and weaken the program. And finally, this bill simply does not do enough to improve transparency and reform the claims process. Enactment of this legislation would make flood insurance more expensive and less available while not actually addressing the program's many problems. I've actually introduced legislation to tackle NFIP's issues head on. The bill is the Bipartisan Save NFIP Reauthorization Act, which would reauthorize the program, cap premium rate increases, authorize funding for more accurate flood mapping, reform the appeals process, and cap the compensation of flood insurance companies. And I also offered amendments in the Rules Committee that would have improved this bill, including a 10% cap on premium increases, increasing the increased cost of compliance from 30,000 to 100,000, capping, capping the profits of flood insurance companies, and other pro-policy holder provisions. But none of these amendments were accepted by the Rules Committee. I hear my Republican colleagues talk about transparency. In fact, this is the 50th closed rule of the year, an all-time record for closed rules. They block both Democratic and Republican amendments. They say in their report, the Rules Committee says in its report, this is a closed rule. Well, if it's a closed rule, how can you talk about transparency or process? And some of my Republican colleagues that offered amendments that were denied were Mr. Donovan of New York, affected by Sandy, Mr. Graves of Louisiana, affected by Katrina, myself and Mr. Pasquale, who went through the Sandy uh, a superstorm. It is incredible to me that we had a number of Democrats and Republicans really wanted to reform the flood insurance program in an effective way based on their experiences, not, you know, some ideology, based on their experiences in the superstorms that we saw that impacted our districts. And the Rules Committee denied every one of those amendments. I yield back. Gentlemen.